Today we talk about the Yellow Mountains. In Chinese, we call them Huangshan. The first time I went there was dead in the winter. <laughs> I always tend to travel to tourist places in winter to avoid the crowd. It's as iconic as, as the name. It's very famous in China, the Yellow Mountains, Huangshan. Uh, and it's depicted in, in all those traditional Chinese landscape paintings. Um, it looks like Yosemite, you know, those rocky faces. What took me even more by surprise are those villages at the foot of the mountain. And it's not like I've never been to rural China. I'm, I'm from Yunnan, so I'm used to village scene. You see so much culture in those villages rather than in Yunnan, you see much more of people squeezing out a living uh, in vast nature. And this area, you see culture shaping nature in a way. A couple of things that are really attractive to me. One is the Yellow Mountain in itself. You, you will see it referred to Yellow Mountain, Huangshan, Yellow Mountains. It is the same area. It's the same sort of mountain range um, in central China, in Anhui province. It's not very far from Shanghai. Nowadays, by high-speed trains, only two and a half hours. Two is the UNESCO World Heritage Sites. There's um, Hongcun and Xidi. Those two are UNESCO sites. But more than those two, there are these clusters of Anhui villages all around, the architecture is stunning. These whitewashed walls, great roof tiles, and they have this, because this area made their wealth um, traditionally by trading. They transported goods along the, the river and the canals. They used to be very wealthy, but now the highway, uh, train tracks sort of left them behind. That's why the culture is left intact there. Hiking up the Yellow Mountain itself and just walking along in those uh, villages from one village to the next. You really get very close to life. You see the grandmas drying their winter cabbage or <laughs> summer fish, whatever, um, or bamboo shoots. It, it's just, it's a beautiful place. Now some of the basics, how much time to spend there. Again, this is, it's really up to how much time you have. I personally take four or five days, I think a week would allow me to explore the nearby mountain area. Five days is good, that's what Wild China product is. Also, it's a great weekend trip from Shanghai. It's only two and a half hours, as I mentioned, by train, high-speed train. It used to take longer. Or you can fly from all major cities to the nearby airport called Tunxi, T-U-N-X-I. So it's a conveniently located. A long weekend to a week is great. As far as seasonality, rains in the summer. Uh, that's the time when you need an umbrella. B spring is really beautiful. Like March and April, all the rape seeds would be blooming. You see fields of yellow. It's really stunning. And wintertime, it's less crowded. Um, so I like that as well. Picking a hotel. There's one thing people love to do in Yellow Mountains. There's a hotel called Xihai Hotel on the top of the mountain. So a lot of people, including Wild China guests, go up there, spend one night and get up really early for the sunrise the next day. Uh, I was too lazy to do that, but it is famous. The hotel itself has more to be desired. It's a bit old. Um, so if you don't fancy uh, a sunrise, then you can stay at the foot of the mountain. At the foot of the mountain, there are, of course, more you know, uh, typical business hotels, which it is fine, but I prefer those with a little bit more character. There are two little inns. One is called the Pig Sing. Uh, it is uh, previously a pig farm, but it has been tastefully converted into small lodge. I like that a lot. And there's another one called Su House in Chengkan Village, which is less crowded compared to the other two UNESCO World Heritage Site. For those who desire a little bit more international brand, there is a Banyan Tree very large rooms. Um, it's, it's, it's fine. I, I've stayed there. Now, inside tips. Number one is hike up the mountain if you are an outdoors person. We mentioned that. Um, and there are many, many trails around in the villages. You just need to either with a local guide or with a map and measure it out to five kilometers, 10 kilometers, and go to explore on foot. You'll see much more. Two, if you have to visit, which I do recommend, you do have to visit Hongcun and Xidi. Those are the two villages, UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Visit them really early or really late um, because they 
tend to get very crowded judging from the buses in the parking lot. Number three is visit those lesser known villages. I think I've said that already. And uh, you can of course do all of this by yourself but if you want to work with Wild China um, there's a link of the itinerary below designed um, to connect with either the airport or the high-speed train will pick you up and drop you off at the end and the Wild China team will take care of everything else, booking the hotels, arranging the guide to take you on hikes and the hikes can be dialed up or down, just tell your trip designer. Contact info at wildchina.com. Thank you and happy trails.